Being a new recruit as a telephone operator working in home safety hotline call center, the protagonist signs in to his computer starting his first day at work. The year is 1996 and there are many hazards which can be dangerous to the callers which the operator is required to assess them through the telephone to keep them safe. The hazards can range anywhere from pest infestation or black mold to supernatural intruders putting the caller's lives at risk. Using the old school operating system and getting accustomed to it, the new responder gets startled by an incoming call by the supervisor of the organization called Carol. Carol explains the protagonist is required to listen to the caller's concerns about the hazards that they're experiencing and correctly diagnose the hazard and submit it through the system so the organization can forward the corresponding safety instructions to the callers. Carol seems very nice and helpful, ready to help the protagonist at any time or at least. That's what her very friendly appearance looks like. From now on, I will refer to the protagonist as Cyrus, a young protagonist who has chosen a path becoming a call center responder at this point of his life, a decision that will change his life forever. Only three entries being accessible for now to Cyrus as a new employee, he reads about bed bugs, bees, and black mold infestation which are typical problems in households which have typical solution to remove and get rid of. The instruction suggests in case of severe infestation, HSHS special services can be used as if being something abnormal and extraordinary. John here. My wife insisted I call this number. It sounds like she thinks we might have some kind of infestation. After reading the description and ways to get rid of some infestations and answering some calls and helping the callers according to the instructions, someone by the name of Twix Segment calls, speaking gibberish, having a visual description of having copy and pasted facial features. Twix seems very unhuman-like and seems like someone who might be posing threats who quickly hangs up not explaining what he wanted. As Cyrus manages to help out all the callers, he clocks out, ending his shift, feeling confident that he's getting the hang of things in this new place. After the day end, starting his second shift, Cyrus signs into his computer, which strangely confirms his DNA that he is a human when he goes over his emails. One email in specific grabs his attention being full of typos by someone called Mike who warns Cyrus about home safety hotline organization that it is not a place it's portraying to be but it is an unsafe place with Cyrus being in great danger as if Mike is talking from experience being a previous employee. According to his frequent typos and having been employed here it seems that he should be someone able to spell correctly and read properly considering their requirements in the job. Therefore, the frequent misspelling doesn't add up as if something horrible happened to him in this place. Mike tells Cyrus to quit before it's too late, but a newly employed Cyrus disregards the email as a cruel prank moving on with his shift. Watching a video clip on the computer intended as a commercial for broadcasting, it explains what this organization is truly for. This call center assists callers with serious household hazards such as floods, fire, and pest infestation, as if being a government helpline. Something strange the commercial displays, however, is offering assistance for a hazard that they refer to as metamorphosis, with an entity seen in the dark, which they don't expand on, implying a more sinister hazard which they deal with, something more supernatural than common hazards one might face. Receiving another call from Carol, she unveils due to exceptional performance of Cyrus on his first chef, she will now release more entries which have more of an abnormal nature being extremely extremely confidential. Correspondingly, going over the newly unlocked entries, Cyrus reads about strange species such as glowing and sharp spiky mold and even humanoid entities known as hub who infest homes and are unlikely to leave. They tend to be harmless and eat dirt in the house, but if provoked, they can metamorphose becoming 
dangerous. Another creature is known as False Beat, which looks almost identical to a regular beat. This entity is a parasitic creature which, upon being eaten, they start setting root inside the host and use the host's nutrients, living through their lifespan. There's no cure without killing the host once the False Beat has set its roots. This reveals HSH as a helpline that deals with supernatural, assisting the general public. It seems as if the general public is not fully aware of the supernatural natural entities living amongst them, hence why this call center listens carefully to callers and decides to diagnose the root cause themselves without asking too much or saying much to the callers. This is also the case with new employees who are not initially told about the supernatural hazards and infestations until the responders show good performance. This is further fortified when a lady calls the helpline and reports having strange experiences that she hears sounds, thinking that she has thieves, but when she goes to check the place, she finds it to be spotless and cleaned. Not knowing what's the cause, she reports it to the police who instruct her to call HSH for help as they know what to do. Cyrus hearing her story, knowing the culprit must be common hub, instead of telling her what the cause is, instead submits the diagnosis to the relevant team in HSH, who send the caller further instructions. Some time later, another call soon connects by the name of Buzz Goober, who goes on a monologue of gibberish, sounding awfully similar to another caller who made no sense previously as of being a prank caller. The scholar also has copy pasted facial features similar to the other color from before. After answering some more calls, Cyrus finishes his second shift successfully. The next day begins and Cyrus checks his inbox, receiving yet another email from Mike with full of misspellings. It seems as if Mike is a mouse who explains he worked there before and how he might be too late for Cyrus as he could end up like him, as the first sign was being shown more stuff, confidential stuff about other threats and hazards to households. Therefore, Mike could have been an employee that was transformed into a mouse whom the organization is looking for to seemingly harm even more, who is hiding in mouse holes. Dismissing the emails once more, Carol calls Cyrus to tell him that he has access to more entries now. Supervisor Carol here again. We've updated your permissions. You should now have access to more extensive information to work with for your future calls. Please be sure to read these new entries carefully so you can continue providing our clients with accurate diagnoses. Please remember that this information is strictly confidential and not to be shared with anyone unless pertinent to a caller's needs. Thank you. In here we learn about the metamorphosed shape of hubs who turn into entities known as Bogart, who have convincing false faces and cause disasters such as fires, floods, and electrical outage. They are described to be extremely dangerous and should be avoided at all costs and never confronted, as they would become very dangerous. Another entry describes creatures which are known as false artifacts, which take the shape of normal household items, but in random places. They are not dangerous to adults but can be to younger humans or smaller animals as they can encase them and slowly digest them as a prey to feed on which can take years for the digestion to be completed. However, the biggest concern is when the preys are encased, no one will hear them any longer and they could die from starvation if no one notices that they are false artifacts. Another entry is about false rose bush, which is an entity disguising itself as such, which has two feet which it uses to chase after small mammal preys like pets and children. A real estate commercial video reports on a missing child which indicates that these false entities or creatures must have been the cause, something that the general public is not aware of for some reason. Another type of entity known as Memory Wisp causes memory loss, making the victims forget the faces of loved ones or pictures, leading to accidents. One man in particular calls reporting in a distressed manner, crying that his wife has lost her face and he cannot see her face anymore, displaying the tragic result of falling victim to this invisible entity. Oh God, it's all gone. 
Another entity known as Mirror Nymph is a humanoid carrying a mirror, urging the victims to look inside the mirror. In the event of doing so, the victim doesn't recognize their face anymore, with the only solution or remedy being to smash the mirror of this entity using an iron implement, with iron seemingly having magical properties being the solution to many of these supernatural occurrences. Another call comes in with similar characteristics of someone with copy-pasted facial features, clearly being the same person who called many times before with similar characteristics, seemingly being a prank caller. Another distressed caller, being in a very bad mood, finds it ridiculous that last time that he called, the team at HSH recommended leaving a bowl of cream at night, clearly someone who had common hub problem. But now he complains about power outages, which clearly indicates that they have metamorphosed as he didn't follow HSH's instructions, leading to a Bogart problem. This reveals that HSH for some reason hides the supernatural side of the world and the strange entities from general public, just helping them out through giving them instructions of how to resolve their said problem. The day soon coming to an end, Cyrus clocks out, eventually starting his new day, being Thursday now. Doing so well at work, he gets special discount for a silver medallion which is said to protect the wearer outside and inside the house. Therefore, it's verified that metals such as iron and silver have special properties defending one from dangerous supernatural beings. Also, the description mentioning inside and outside of the house suggests that there are more supernatural entities outside of the house. Watching a new clip, the video describes a new species of mice which are known as the smart mouse, which are seemingly capable of communication. Despite only squeaking, scientists' latest translation manage to understand what they say, asking for help. This in a way could reveal that these mice were once humans. This goes back to the emails Mike, the previous employee of HSH, sent to Cyrus, asking for help and warning him. Therefore, this organization might be the culprit of turning so many humans into mice that a new species of them has been created. Another entry reveals that there's something known as fey flu which causes the victim to have flowers growing out of their skin pores. Unfortunately, despite sounding like a normal flu, this disease is incurable and can cause long-term discomfort and suffering for the full lifespan of the carrier. Apart from creatures, diseases, and parasites, supernatural beings can also be environmental such as portals, grottos, and labyrinths. After some time, getting a call, hearing the cries of a caller missing her child with Cyrus submitting it that it could be the false artifact which swallows children, Cyrus gets a familiar call from the prankster with copy-pasted facial features, this time introducing himself as Gub Rubber. After assisting some more callers, Cyrus manages to wrap up the shift and start his new day on Friday. This time around, he's got a new email from Mike who explains that all his holes have been breached with it having found it, not being safe any longer. It's not clear who Mike is talking about and why he is so scared of this being, he doesn't disclose. On Friday, receiving a new call from Carol, she speaks strangely, explaining that Cyrus has impressed all above and beneath the soil, as if she alongside others and the organization might not actually be human themselves, but disguised fairy entities. She commends Cyrus for his great work at diagnosing colors problems and asks him to come to work on the weekend as well. The familiar prank caller calls again with the copy-pasted facial features, this time introducing himself as Flipper, which starts to get really annoying. Reading on the new entries, learning about some new horrifying entities which create labyrinths and mazes in closets and feed on dreams making them into reality, Cyrus reads about Cobalt, who are humanoid entities which reside in dark places of the home and can be very dangerous if discovered or confronted. They may even try to lure homeowners to their domain, which can end with their death. 
That's when Carol calls Cyrus, explaining the little pranks there has been dealt with and shouldn't be of any concern any longer, with Carol not expanding on what they have done to him. This reveals with their fairy backgrounds and nature, Carol alongside team members at HSH can be very dangerous themselves, capable of many things. Moving on and reading more about the entries, another dangerous entity is Sprig Tree, which is resulted from Spriggan. Sprig Tree is a tree-shaped entity which grows at a rapid rate and can grow inside humans. It's self-explanatory what happens to the victims infected with this entity, who get torn from inside out. Finishing the shift after assessing some colors, facing some of the more sinister entities such as the Floor Roots and Mirror Nymph, Cyrus starts the new day, checking his email to see another email sent from Mike, but this time around being automated. The email reads that the employee who owned this email address before is not available anymore and that his email address will be removed as he is not an employee at HSH any longer. This portrays that Mike's location was compromised and something horrible happened to him after being discovered by the people in HSH. Subsequently, watching another clip about a national park called the Thunder Peak, there seems to be a quiet area in a cave on the trail before reaching the peak for the view, which requires absolute silence and in case something notices the hiker, an iron sword must be used as an instrument for self-defense. Therefore, this explains metals such as iron and silver have special properties and also these supernatural entities exist out of homes and can be found in nature more commonly. Starting his next shift, Carol calls being more bizarre and instructing Cyrus to prepare his buddy to join the soil, speaking in riddles as if wanting to do something to him or transform him. Despite learning this organization is nothing that he expected, learning about the supernatural aspect of the world that he never knew of, knowing a previous employee already turned into a mouse and a prank caller disappeared, with the people at HSH themselves possibly being supernatural entities. Cyrus continues as usual, without panicking as if he wants to join them, or if that's not him being scared, pretending to be okay with all of this so something more severe couldn't happen to him. After assisting some more color, Cyrus gets a call from a familiar person with copy-pasted facial features, this time instead of speaking gibberish, making squeaking mouse sounds. <laughs> This reveals the prankster who kept calling in was dealt with by HSH being transformed into a mouse. Just how Mike was transformed into one as well, unclear to why. Therefore, HSH has the ability to transform humans into mice or even other animals if they wish to. After managing to successfully end his Saturday shift, he ends the day and begins Sunday when he receives an email from HSH wanting to test them through a final trial to prepare him for the rich soil so he can descend and seemingly join the fairy beings. In the trial, several callers call Cyrus with riddles so they can test his knowledge and intuition for responding to colors and his knowledge about supernatural beings and infestations. As Cyrus answers all the riddles correctly, Carol calls Cyrus to congratulate him for passing the trial, this time around dropping her disguise as a human, revealing that she is a supernatural being. She then instructs Cyrus to stand by while he is prepared and promoted to a better position presumably being his dissension into the soil. While being promoted, Cyrus passes out, losing his consciousness, when all of a sudden he finds himself in the nature, confronted by Carol who is in her natural unhuman form. She gives him a vine crown, congratulating him as the new junior supervisor, while many other team members revealing themselves to be supernatural entities dance gleefully in celebration of someone else joining them a human transforming into one of them. So it's a possibility that they were all once humans themselves, or maybe some were fairy beings from before, or maybe even all. On the other hand, if Cyrus fails the trial or fails to correctly diagnose the color's concerns, Carol calls in with a disappointed tone to inform him that his performance has caused the demise or suffering of many humans and colors, and due to that, it's unfortunate that his employment is terminated with them. This leads to Cyrus losing his consciousness and awakening on the floorboards, observing himself being 
a mouse. Therefore, this reveals what happened to the previous employee, Mike. His performance was less than satisfactory as well, resulting in him becoming a mouse. That's also what happened to the prank caller. This seems to only happen after the second day when the employees already start to learn about the supernatural entities living amongst them though. So essentially turning into a mouse is a way for HSH to protect their own identities and the veiled side of the world, which has more of a supernatural nature. It's not clear why they want to hide this side from the general public, but it's possible humans would turn against them and cause major wars or havoc. HSH is essentially like the men in black operating in shadows, helping humans, protecting them from the supernatural entities while keeping their identity and existence a secret. Originally, the developer wanted to make the protagonist or any employees not performing well lose their memory of being there or all the supernatural entities by Carol wiping their memory. But to make it more challenging and thrilling, the developer decided to make it that way with the bad performing employees turning into a mouse. So the similarity of them being similar to the Men in Black organization seems very obvious. This brings us to the end of the video folks. If you enjoyed it, make sure to stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, it's been your host Star, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day. <laughs>